Buenas tardes, ¿y cómo está, amigo? Every week you say it this way, some foreign, different language. If it's no Gaelic, it's Spanish. I think you need to learn like a random language like Mongolian or something. For next uh, week. For next week? Right. I have well, is whenever, that whenever, we, whenever we post this. But that could be on you, uh, a new goal. I'll have a, new, a different uh, fucking introduction in a different language each week. I think next week, Dean, you need to write down some sort of introduction for me to say in Dean and Ease. Hey, uh, how you doing, guys? I'm Dean. <laughs> Did I get the pronunciation right? No, no, no. You messed it. I heard that. At the end there. <laughs> I'll practice that for next week. Anywho. As per usual, I'm this guy, he's that guy. We are the same folk guys. That side. We're the same folks, and we, aye, we've been had a bit of hiatus for probably two weeks by the time this is posted up. Just be, you know, the world don't back up. Raymond's now back, finally working away, so... I'm, I'm, back, at, I'm back at work for six much. days a week. Aye, aye, same. I've been doing six week, days a week the last, last couple of weeks, so... The joys of that, the joys of work, so obviously we can't have no really time to sit down and be able to record a stupid episode of each other yapping rubbish to each other. So finally managed to sit down, so we thought we'd talk about an episode of Tease. Tease this episode's quite a lot over the last couple of months since we started doing this. We talk about our inside jokes. We've, all, we've, we've mentioned them, but we said we'd always get into talking about them. So we thought... Since we're for the hiatus for a couple of weeks, we'd actually talk about the inside joke, jokes and let you know about the inside jokes. And, well, where else is there? Where a better place is there than, than the origins of the name, of how we, why we, why we call each other Stain Folks, why is the nickname of the show called the Stain Folks show? Why do we call each other Stain Folks? See, this is one that we actually, we've said about actually doing this as an episode, but after mentioning it this before we started recording that well, neither is are actually hundred percent certain how it came about. No, we've both got the stain poke patch on my respective leathers or I think actually I think mine's on my denim vest. The folk have seen yeah. that and asked me where it's came from. And like, where, where did Stain Pope come from? What I tell folk is that me and you used to call each oh, other that so we could Jesus. away we call each other a ball bag in class. But I, if I'm totally honest, sitting down and thinking about it, I'm not sure if that is where that came from. Or if it was just some random word that somebody said when we were out and about when we were maybe running at the precinct skate. So wherever we land in the edit here, uh, well, we were talking originally about the origins of the name Stainpoke. Right. Now, both of us have got patches with it on a vest of some description. Mine's is on the denim one, yours is on the leather one. Uh, but actually sitting down and thinking where the name Stainpokes came from, I'm not actually 100% sure where no. actually when the first time we said it was. I have had quite a few folk notice the patch and say, what does that mean? Right. And my response is, well, think about it. Say it in my accent, stain poke. You've got two stains and they're in your poke. Your stain poke, it's a ball bag. Right, yeah, um, a ball bag. I I, then I go on to explain how me and you used to call that each other that in school. I'm, I can't mm. remember if we did. But it sounds like something that we would have done. Say again? We were using stain poke back in school. Aye. High school, I was certainly using the same book back then. Like, I, I, like you're saying, I don't remember the exact, the exact time frame of when we said it, isn't it? I just know we, we've always kind of called each other same folk, like you're saying. It was a, a way you call each other ball bag, was it calling each other ball bag? It wasn't as offensive to the word ball bag either. It was merely a joke. Aye. And it confuses people, people who don't understand airship or even come knocking. I will not understand the word stain pop. And I've met many right. people who have done that. I've done deep, not one of them understood the word. And I walk about with the, the stain pop part doing all the time. And then the every gig I went to, and they knew what the word meant. And I love that. They gave me that excuse to explain it to them. 
No. Oh, I, 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 the, I remember, I think it was just before you got the stem poke patches for us. I was doing a hospitality course at college and on the first day we were given a wee bit of paper that we were to fold in half and write our name on it and have it sitting as if we were at school. <laughs> and my response as soon as I seen this was, do I need to write my given name? It's like, write whatever you want to be called. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Light bulb moment. Stain poke. Pride and place. I sat there in my arms folded, waiting for her to ask us. And waiting for the woman to ask what the stain poke mean. And it's like, it's a pride side joke between me and my pal. If I have to explain it, you still win the honor stone. <laughs> <laughs> But it was quite funny, man, because I ran into her months later after I had finished the course, and that was all you heard. Oh, you're staying for, get you? Fucking too right, Al. Known forever is staying for for that woman. That is now young. Mate, I was the guy that showed up two hours late for training one day. Might not be able to enter the class because of how late I was. I says, I just give me a chance, and I walked out with the highest mark, the highest mark in the whole place. That's but in fairness, in fairness, it was an exam regarding working in a boozer. There's not really much you, if you've worked in a boozer. There's not really much you don't know about it. I think you've worked you quite a few, you've quite a few now. Uh, ten year I've been be- jumping between different boozers and whatnot. Uh, as a, only a wee side note, Scotland's actually playing in a fucking decent tournament. What do you think of that, fat boy? We're not talking about it. Don't give a fuck. Fucking the letting fans yeah. sit in a stadium, but they'll not up certain things, certain other things in the country. They're letting all these stupid folks sit and watch a fat boy. It's a bit stupid. I, I think it's pointless. Oh, it's, 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 I'm not going to lie, I, I did listen to the Scotland game the other day while I was at my work. I had the Scotland game on in the radio, but pointed out that it's the only game they will hear me listening to at the work. I'm not interested in the rest. Mm-hmm. I should be the... looking at the results of some of the games just, just to see who, who's winning them all. Because I'll, 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 something we'll talk about in my work, obviously, is who's, who's going to win it. Oh, I've, don't get me wrong. I have been getting regular updates and stuff on how the, how the tournament's gone, but... I'm not really that interested in it. Fair dues, the most surprising update was my mom coming in and telling me about how that guy wrapped on the park. Right. That Danish player. That was fucking mental. Right, the guy had a fucking pad last day. That was my work, work, and the guy was looking on the, like, the updates on it, and it came up, and he was like, fucking hell, guys, there's a head attack on the well, and the car like a rest, and on the way on touch. So I was like, what the hell? What's going on? Getting to fault, he's just going. The, the, the only game I, I watched, I watched the first office Sporting game, and then I watched, I watched about the the France, uh, who was it? France Germany played last night. What was we about yet? It's all right. The, the game was quite interesting, but it was not happening. The, the, uh, the only goal was called an OG. <laughs> I watched ten minutes of the Scotland game. But it wasn't even a case of I was sitting still for 10 minutes watching it. It just happened to be in the background while I was in one of the rooms. I listened to the majority of it. It was actually quite funny because you know the lads that actually managed to hear how clever my Gaelic was because it was a Gaelic coverage I was listening to wow. on the grounds of, well, if I'm listening to that, nobody's going to know that it's a football I'm listening to. Except right. for... And I was out on a smoke break just as the Czech Republic went up 1 0, where I had mentioned, right, that's the Czech Republic's just scored. And you seen the guy straight onto the phone to double click, click, click. You, you translated that, right? It's like, what do you think I'm talking shite when I say I've been studying it for 15 months? Okay, what's wrong about it? Where would I, what would I benefit for lying about studying a language? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yes, it might make me look a bit cleverer than I am, but when I'm saying that I can study the language, then mutter out a few sentences that are clever enough that you don't recognise it. It is actually quite good, but it was one of the kind of first opportunities I had where I ate the work folk are asking, how good are you at it? And it's like, well, if you don't speak it, how can I prove how good I am? Right. Whereas the, the other day with the football being on and me being, even just being able to translate that there's Czech Republic, but up 1-0. 
Mm-hmm. It, it, was clever, it, was a, it was a clever enough example where he could turn around and say, well, as, as he telling the truth, Paul's a on it. Oh, he's right enough. The Hovjies went up one now in the last two seconds since he said that. That's quite for against. He's not he's no just went and looked at his phone and getting this. He's right, I listened to it in the radio. Well, that, as, as I say, it's like walking about with the Gallic coverage on while I'm at the work. I could listen to anything. Right. Aye, right, fair dues. You do recognise you can talk, regardless of what language they're speaking, you can totally tell football commentator when a goal scores. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you, you actually sounded like the Gaelic commentator when they scored. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> the one that always reminds me is that old fucking commentator a few years ago that everybody kept quoting Fantastico! I can't even believe it, Jess. I just coughed. I can't believe it. He's <laughs> uh, right, back through the, the football because neither is are actually interested in football. Oh. Uh, but we'll talk about uh, Kick another buzz That could be where we segue uh, the, Do you want to take the lead on this one? Oh, yeah. There you go, there you go. Uh, Well so uh, since we turned What age would that have been when I got the boots? You had just got with Alison Aye oh, so I'd have been 16, 17 uh, So this one we can kind of link to the idea of the film Tag. The idea mm-hmm. of you don't get old, be- uh, you don't stop playing because you get old, you get old because you stop playing. And now they guys are well into their 40s, well, well into their career and their life and whatnot, but they still get together every year to have a game of Tag that lasts a month and whatnot. Well, our game of Tag isn't necessarily a game of Tag. Well, it is, and it isn't. But rather than just getting up and hitting each other, it as a punch in the buzz. No, see, what we need to explain is nobody else is allowed to get involved. No. There's only two people in this game, and it's me v him. Right. Uh, and even though even though what annoys Raymond the most is he still doesn't hold the record. Probably the best boss I've ever, I've, I've ever received. It still annoys him. <laughs> it does, uh, it does, and it does now because at the, at the same time, it does not annoy me because I've seen how fucking mu- how much pain you were in that day, mate. But I still stand by the best one was the very first one when I forgot to stay That's Because we, we had started this, this war, as we said, 16, 17, you had just got with the missies. And we were running about slapping each other on the bars, and I'm pretty sure there was more than. But oh, as we go, very careful, we dropped it. Mm-hmm. That this particular day, I had just got a pair of steel tape cap bats, and I would wore them out to wear, like to try and fucking wear them in, so that they weren't the killing the feet, and. Dean standing at the bus station I think to myself here yeah, this is a fucking great shot here line it up and swing and kick for people who know come up bus stands we'll say I was standing in bus stand five I landed in bus stand I'm going to I'm going to point out this as well it's the old building at the bus stands it's not the new yeah, yeah, one the old the old the old the old classic old 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 I say we're in bus stand five and I landed in bus stand three. I still feel it to this day. You can't. <laughs> the, uh, it it was, was one of the moments oh. as soon as, soon as I seen you hit the ground straight away, I was like, oh fuck. I've, I did, I've got steel take caps on. Fuck, I've just put a full swing in that because normally I've got like scale shoes on or skate shoes on or whatever else. Oh. And mate, I actually I, I was close to greeting for you at that. Both feet left the ground and I floated in the air to bus stops. Landed on my feet and then just crumbled into a ball 
most heels trying to be a man in front of my my missus who had just started dating as you said probably what not even a month <laughs> I, I, I reckon it would have been a couple of months at most I don't even think it would I think it would probably not even a month I think it was literally just as we just started starting going out I think if I, was, if I can remember I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not well now but as I <laughs> we are talking about as I years. say it's, like, it's really a, an inside joke between us because like we said nobody else has been allowed to get involved Right. Uh, there has been people try to get involved b- by it. until they find out that well if you can't come in the notice that means that I'm allowed to get revenge on you for that right. wait what it's like, aye, that's the way the rules go because if if it's if you hit one person it's fair game, game means you, want, means you want to play it means we'll get involved we'll start, we'll start the game we'll do it properly oh no right. I don't like that idea I don't like that idea but there's another one as well the fact that it can happen at any time mm-hmm. like, there's no strict there's no strict rules as to when and where one can take place fair dues we have we, we have, have, that, we have the set rules not in a pub for all those reasons violence in pubs that you can't pubs so we always did that we went to the pub on Friday night it was a common thing no pub, no in the pub. No outside the pub, the pub in the smoking bay. Yeah. Didn't the beer garden not in the pub. pub. Yes, beer inside. It's always the pub. pub. I've, 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 I've hot you slash you for me as I'm walking in the in the battles of dogma. I've been three yes. or four times probably, but that was not in the pub. <laughs> you were still outside and, the pub. In fairness, did we not have a few hats in? A couple of pubs, like the likes of the Sun and the Dagmar, but they were pubs that we were in regular enough that folk oh, on us. That that is just Dean and Ray. <laughs> so it's all right. Don't worry about it. We didn't do a Friday night. We didn't do a Friday night because it was like a Friday night was like a it's just drink. That don't have any other known to just drink. Right. Because it was like the end of the night, end of the week. So it's getting smashed. <laughs> Friday night was my whole weekend because I was off work on a Friday then I worked the rest of the weekend. No, no I go I go to the very rare Friday night half so I made I made every every transit I go to go to party and I done it. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I worked just about every Friday unfortunately. Usually midnight to eight o'clock in the morning. Horrible fear. See, uh, another one about the rules was it I'm pretty sure there was a few dick slaps happened in shops. Oh, aye. Oh, aye. Oh, that doesn't mean that. Ah, anyway, that doesn't mean anything. Anyway, anyway, it doesn't mean It's just the only rule was actually Friday night. Friday night, no, no, no inside the pub. Anywhere else is the same. But ob- obviously, there would be certain situations where we would be like, no, nah, that was how just Disney take place here. Like, I right. could imagine a, a wedding or a funeral. Like, would they take any moments where we would be like, no, I wouldn't have put it past you. But we're waiting to put it past you. No, I mean, I can totally see it. Like, I, I have had that thought, I'm, like, that idea in my head. Like, should I totally do one on Dean's wedding if and when they get married? Well, I'm thinking, <laughs> in my head, I'm totally thinking, I should, but when should I do it? When should it happen? <laughs> Let's make a toast. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make a toast to Dean and Alison. Whack. <laughs> Dean's on the green green. <laughs> I mean, my first dance didn't have me now since the one first dance, so that'll not happen. <laughs> Mate, Alice is dancing with me at the first dance. <laughs> well, you're the bride of honour. Oh, I am the maid of honour, that's right. I've, yeah, I've forgotten. So, right. so let's talk about that one then, because that's, that's a joke we've actually not done, because that's quite a good intro, inside joke between me, you, and Alison, because Alison talks about still to this day, the fact that you're you're my mate, you you you're not going to be my best man, you're going to be her maid of honour. Yeah. One night we're at the pub, I just got engaged, and Raymond took a hissy fat because I hadn't asked him to be my best man. No. <laughs> wait, 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 like, wait, wait, like, wait, 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 w
<laughs> it wasn't as if they just got engaged. This was two or three year afterwards. I like it. Like I, we, we, it, it was already a given that like, my best man was going to do him. Didn't have to ask him. It was a like, given. But he took that happy flat in the pub because I hadn't asked him to be my best man. So Alison turns around, half cut, and goes, "Come out, Raymond. You can be my maid of honor. Then you be my maid of honor." And Raymond said, "I obviously." <laughs> Alice's wee, Alice's wee pal. You can fight me for it if you want it, but I'm Alice's maid of honour. She was there that night. Is it? Yeah, out there there is an open challenge. You want to be the maid of honour? Fight me for it. I just think that was the night she ended up with her man. That's who she's with now. It probably was. Because she ended up, she left, she left us to go, go chat, chat to him for a bit, and I'm almost certain that was the night they ended up together, unofficially. But I think it was the exact same night, if I'm not mistaken. Well, probably, mate. But I, I think it was quite funny. Because uh, it was, it, it was like you said, it, it was a given. I expected to be your best man anyway, but at the same time, the, the, there was never actually a conversation where it was discussed that you I would be asked or whatever. And while you were drinking, it was like, oh, God, you've not actually asked me, you prick. <laughs> I've just assumed. I could be like that next man's speech to show up in the fucking day and get tell, no, what's going on here? Your dad or your brother or something? <laughs> but I fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think it's quite funny because the amount of fear that's going to go through your face when I stand up to say that speech at the end. Of- uh, no, that's the only problem. That's the only reason I don't say that. It could be lost. It could be my dad's speech. You were you, you on the edge one's actual wedding, were you? The food? For the speeches? No, it was the, yeah. the party bit afterwards because you oh, were trying to keep it quiet. I was gone. My dad, my dad's, uh, my dad's speech was no a good speech. <laughs> oh, it was like three words, four word stops. <laughs> Thanks. Here's the Joanne and Derek. Cheers. <laughs> Sam, like oh, nah, mate. See, in fairness, I think if like, one Tuesday actually sort of say a date and stuff. I'm going to have to go through all the footage for here and try and find stories that nobody cares. Ah, it's all right. No many for watches anyway, especially the same one. <laughs> oh, no, mate. I, in fairness, I, the, the way it gets through my head when I hang on it is the How I Met Your Mother episode where Marshall and Lily's getting married, but Ted's got to come up with the best man speech and it's not to be too vulgar, but it's not mm-hmm. to be too, like, childish. Right. And thinking to myself, right, <laughs> some of the stories that get through their heat is fucking, right, that, that, I, there's vulgar and childish, then there's the ones that don't even go on the board. <laughs> I look, yeah, I look like, like still in the ducks, we've got the childish, but that's like a story that needs to be told. <laughs> What's that? The ducks. The ducks. That's technically, uh, that's technically childish, but that's a story that needs to be told. Aye. Mate, that's, that's quite funny though, because it did spark the week in an inside joke between you and her. Does that go that, that's, that's so, right, why it became, it became such an iconic moment? Like, not, not very many folk could say they went out in the past and come home with rubber ducks. <laughs> By a road sign. If you want to see the stories and previous episodes, thinking stories, go check them out. Hi. Uh, some of these stories, if you've never heard them before, you will wet yourself when you hear them. Oh, uh, I actually, that was something I meant to say to you the other day, man. I had I was sitting on the bus heading for work and I had somebody we went to school away saying about how they've caught the podcast a couple of times and they're like, is it hearing the stories? No. Who was it? Uh, Big Jack Steele. Oh, Big Jack. Big Jack's my cousin. Oh, mate, he's he's fucking dropped a power of weight. Sorry, Huz. Dropped about five dropped up at five stand for his left kitchens. Oh, he's labouring now and he's working kitchens. Mm, that's a good deal. I like Jack. Jack's a good boy. 
Lost enough weight that I nearly didn't recognise him. <laughs> Jesus, I said something. <laughs> Near a dead. Better go and say, I'm laughing before I tell it. My favourite one, Oaksters. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is one of the few, st- well, I was going to say a few stories, but I've got quite a few up there that predated you and Alison getting together. But no, that's what I mean, Alison. Aye, ah, hey, that's what I'm saying. This was just before you and Alison got together, was it not? No, 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 no. This is, this is just after? after me and Alison. This is just after me and Alison. Right, because so this would be at the same time but, as the state of the dick slap war then? Basket is before. Oaks or after. Remember right, Oaks? I'm getting confused then. Oh, 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 Oaks there was a different time, remember? Right. Oaks there was when I had my mum and dad's so house getting stoned. Right. I, see, I thought that was the one that you were going for there. Right, right. No, no, we'll tell that one. We'll go for that. We'll go for that. We'll go for that. We'll go for So that we're sitting. We're, we're, we're waiting to... We went into the mute, we come uh, the rugby club, and then we come up, we headed back up the road. It was too cold, and we couldn't smoke outside. And we decided, let's go to Mabat because where else can you smoke without getting caught, without getting smelt? My mum and dad's house. When I was mum and dad's <laughs> back, sat in the living room, stuck on scuds, and sat and smoked and smoked and smoked. And I'm sat in there, what, 15, uh, 16, 17, not really smoked much before, sat in there. Pretty stone, pretty stone sitting in the couch going, Raymond, I'm picturing the Alice and Scuds, and you just come in and go, don't picture it. Wait, 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 <laughs> and, and we just we just crumbled for again probably half hour we sat and laughed about Oaksters because mate the, the pain in my stomach was coming back for that laughing session because <laughs> what, what's what, what's so funny about the word Oaksters but it's word Oaksters Mate, it's, it's not even that funny a word, especially in this part of Scotland. Like everybody kens that word. It was just a, like the fact that is, I'm saying I was high as fuck and said picture of Rockstars. And the, the main question is, what, no, what's funny about them? What did, and I was going through my head to think, he's thinking an attractive body pair. Tell him to think of Rockstars. <laughs> like, mate, I'm thinking I, I must have like a wee Cheech and Chong sits in this shooter. Same stupid thing. Like, Cheech and Chong on this side, and um, what's the fucking Harold and Kuma of them in that one? <laughs> Just telling me to say stupid or something. <laughs> but it was it was the same last week, man. Fucking Tommy was up, and I, me and him are down having a wee visit with Jason. We went to Asda, and I found pink cocoa pops. Pink cocoa pops? And I come in, mate, they're strawberry and white chocolate flavoured cocoa pops. Oh, God. The easiest, easiest way to explain it is see the strawberry milkshake you can get out of Tesco's or Asda. It's the Ain brand stuff. Imagine mm. pouring that over a bowl of Rice Krispies. That's what you're eating. Nice. But, mate, I actually think it tastes all right. But it was that way when I went into Asda to buy nappies, but I was a bit worse for wear at the time because obviously don't see Tommy very often, so that means we're inhaling quite a lot more than usual. And... Seen these cocoa pops, seen that they were two pound and goes, I've got two pound in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Been there many a times. Tell me so staying across the road for us it was a bad fucking combination. Mate, I got sent to the shop to buy nappies and baby bungella for the wane. But I come out so proud that yes, I did in fact buy the nappies and the baby bungella before as they closed. But I also come out with this box of cereal and I was thinking that's going to win me pure brownie points with the wains. 
because I brought a new cereal back for them to try. Even though they're better than they get a bit yet. Oh no, mate, the box is still there. I've only had one bowl at it. Okay, but I'm man. the only one that likes them. The wings don't like them. <laughs> but see, this the time, it, Ken, it took me 35 minutes to pour a bowl of these, these fucking cocoa pops. When I say it took me 35 minutes, I mean it took me 35 minutes to get for the chair in the living room to the fucking kitchen because I kept coming up with stupid shit that I wanted to say. And Laura was sat watching her soap. She used to be like, well, you shut the fuck up and go make something to eat if you're gone. <laughs> but it was all, all close. like it all stems from fucking stupid nights where you consume a bit more than you're supposed to mm-hmm. talking about consuming more than you, you should do uh, let's talk about the sign of God <laughs> so like, it, like this, this is what I did one before Alison this is getting way before Alison this is like this is about three or four years before Alison uh, we like we like all teenagers. We decided let's try and smoke, and we like. But at that point, smoking's the uh, you're underage. They so can't go buy it at a show. So you smoking go was find expensive. It wasn't nearly as expensive as it was the new. But even at the shop, you're talking it was but four pound twenty for the cheapest pack of twenty fags, mm-hmm. or. I feel well because we knew somebody's mommy who sell cheap fags at the door. Right, so, <laughs> on this particular day, I decided I had fucking decided to take a fag for somebody at the weekend, and it settled me down, and it was coming up to exam time. And I went into Dean's back and says, "Right, see where your mum and dad gets the cheap fags for. See if I gave you money, would you go and get us a pack?" I ain't a bother. Dean being Dean. Then he come back with one pack, came back with two packs, and decided that he would take up smoking as well. No, but at this point, I'd already smoked a wee bit because I was a mum and I smoked, so I'd been smoking like those wee bits in and about the house. So I tried it, so I'd already known the taste of it. So it wasn't like a, just a random spot of the moment, let's try smoking. I'd always say, I've been trying it for a wee bit, so I thought, right, let's try it, let's try it, we'll pay five packs each, because they're only two pounds. I think at that point, it was two pounds, I was buying them for, so it wasn't like it was losing it much. And I could always tell them it was my mum. <laughs> right. But, we decided, I decided, to... we got the, that wasn't, got... The, wasn't the first pack, I did that way, it was like, the first or fourth pack, it was the sign of God, I would say, maybe the, I think maybe the fifth pack. It wasn't the first, because I smoked a couple, I hadn't really been inhaling them. It was until it was the first park I learned how to inhale. <coughs> we walked the the old precinct to the uh, the swimming pool, and I smoked seventeen Mayfields or Fakefields. So I walked the, we walked the the precinct, couldn't smoke in it precinct. To walk into the swimming pool, couldn't smoke in at the swimming pool. I smoked 17 uh, fake males, ma- so fake uh, import Mayfields, mm-hmm. uh, back to back, right? Smoke one, light in, smoke one, light in, smoke one, light in. 17 all I smoked. All in this time, Dean smoked 17 fags, I smoked three. <laughs> no, that was, that was for buying the pack of fags to get into the swimming pool. I smoked them by this precinct to the... Because we think that's it, we didn't get for the normal one. This time we go for the... The one the, 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 you ended up getting normal. Cross for the Asda. Aye. So uh, we picked them up. Yeah, we picked them up just across the Asda. So I smoked them at the precinct and then walked along to the uh, beat the pool. And I go to the pool, smoked a wee bit, Smoked it, smoked like two minutes at the pool. I was raving for a, a swally is just kill me now. I was like, come on, mate, I don't feel too good. Give this swally your fucking your iron brew. One swally it and then the whole thing come back up. Oh, and that stayed and sat there for about three, four years. <laughs> that way did stay. And I went, that's that. I'll get up smoking. That was a, at that point I was a, a very brainwashed Christian. 
So I was going, that's that, that was that, that was our same thing, God. That was the same thing, God. I can't need, I need to stop smoking. I can't need to smoke. Two of them are smoking. Got to tell me not to smoke. And end up getting Raymond the three fags left in my, 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 my pocket. And to be fair, I've never really smoked since then. Uh, I smoked a wee bit when I went, when I started, when I started 18, and going to the pubs and that. But then I stopped doing that. I've never smoked tobacco. Yeah, that wasn't even that wasn't even necessarily because you wanted to smoke though. That was just because when we were at the pub, ninety percent is smoked. So rather than sat in the pub by yourself when everybody else was going for a fag, you'd come out. I come out and I end up having a fag with them just because it meant, it meant I had something to do. It wouldn't mean wouldn't it necessarily be that every time you come out you had a fag either. It would be just if you if you could be bothered really. Right, or if I was drunk. Depending how drunk I was, depending on how much. So yeah. as we were saying, as we were saying, you had your mad epiphany sound for God. <laughs> I gave you all my bags and then that was that. Yeah, it was me. I've never, I've never, as I say, I've never smoked since. It's never been a, I don't like tobacco. Tobacco's nicotine's always gave me that funny feeling where it makes me sick. I've never yeah. really enjoyed that. That buzz, that nicky buzz to talk about, that was probably what. What was wrong with that day was the nicky buzz and I couldn't handle it. Uh, your, your body just came too much. Like you, you smoked 17 fags in the space of two of those, man. No, I, my body's like, I have not enough. So, <laughs> well, yes. But I, I, I just, I, I've been a weird 16 year old Christian now, believing it was a, a sign for God and I just stopped smoking. And in the hindsight, I'm glad I did because I don't like smoking. <laughs> right, so you can take the lead on Jobby. Jobby, let's talk about Jobby. <laughs> oh, only folk I can that can talk shit about Jobby. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about our favourite one, well, probably our favourite inside. This is about my favourite inside joke. Wait, out it all. Let's talk about it, Jobby because Jobby's awesome. <laughs> So for those of you that don't speak Scots, Jobby is a Scottish slang term used for poo or shite or totally. No showing you on the screen, he's got a pet Jobby. Jobby, Jobby. So Wait, what's your, what's your pet Jobby's Jobby. name? Jobby. <laughs> Jobby Plemsley. Jobby. Jobby the Jobby. Has he not got a son name? Jobby McJobby Jobbies. <laughs> Jobby McJobbies. <laughs> so the reason we love Jobby so much is my my artistic uh what's, what's the word Dean's word? artistic flair does they go far beyond shite. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm looking for. But sounds like sounds artistic. like a pure insult slagging him off, but it's not because Dean's artistic flair doesn't go far beyond shape because he can draw jobbies and that's it. Yes, I'm very good at drawing a jobby. I'm very, very good at drawing the the classic two rings and then the like the what's the word? M- Mr. Whippy background. Oh, I must have whippy jobby with some stink lines and some some uh, some flies. I'm quite I'm quite artistically drawn. I'm, I draw jobbies quite a lot, quite a lot, especially when I was younger. Like a wee bit of graffiti in spaces where a sharpie, I drew a jobby. And that was like a go to thing. <laughs> oh, and Ken, the sad thing is, mate, I don't think there's any of your jobbies left in coming up. No, 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 there'll no be the lobby. No, I'll probably draw it all after the way uh, the bugs are going to drop and open down there. I think the next time you're done him, hey, hey, man, you need to get a can of spray paint and go and plaster a few jobbies up. <laughs> Just got a fucking jobby spray paint everywhere. <laughs> Mate, you, you could spray paint a big jobby, then write fat boy with you. And I'll need it. That guy's a bit obvious how it'd be, though. <laughs> Aye, but I'll teach you how to do it in Spanish. <laughs> Mate, uh, well, in fairness, right, Balak Rower is how you say it in fucking Gaelic. Balak Rower is fat boy. El fat boy. El fat boy. El fat mijo. So, uh, el, el, el grande mijo. 
and now there's a uh, what's the word? Now, 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 now there's uh, emojis and a thing. We send each other the jobby emoji on probably a weekly, if not a daily occurrence. If somebody's not answering, if they're not answering each other's questions, or we just want to know each other, we send each other a jobby emoji. Depending on uh, well, sometimes as well, mate, you've also got to point out that sometimes we send jobby emojis by accident. Aye. Sometimes we don't want... tend to send them. Sometimes we do intend to send them. Sometimes we send like five hundred. Aye. That's when we tend to send them. When we tend to send it, we send a few. If it's accidental, we send one. <laughs> but the one usually works in the conversation we're having at that moment in time. The jobby just fits into that statement. Aye. And we like jobbies that much that uh, when you come up visit me in Dundee. We were in a like one of these stupid geek shops, and we found we came across like a Mister Hunky sort of a jobby, like the thing that the ATM thing I'm holding my hand now. And I picked up, showed Raymond we're going to buy it, and we had the back then. And then we go out the out the pub, out the shop, we at the shopping mall, and Raymond chucks chucks up at me, and I I look down, and in my hand I hold a jobby, and this jobby now sits proudly place on my shelf as I was one of my toys. I've tried to rub off the eyes because I don't want to miss a hunky. I just want a jobby. Because why, why? Who else? Who, who loves jobbies? Everybody loves a jobby. Uh, I'm going to point out that I'm, as far as I'm aware, nobody noticed anything. And Dean, the, the look on Dean's face, he was like a waiting Christmas day for a long rest tail and realised. <laughs> But how did you get that? Magic hands, mate. Magic hands. Uh, magic magic hands. And that's what I care about. You, you didn't care how much it cost you had your wee pet jobby. Right. I don't bet. I... So, Dean, do you like biscuits? I love biscuits, mate. Do you like biscuits? Oh, I, I feel like a biscuit. I'm sure you've got a story about biscuits that we could tell on camera. Oh, I'm certainly can tell a story about biscuits on camera. It also involves the very first time. I'm certain it's the first time you got stoned as well as I got stoned. Uh, first, first time, first time I got stoned, were you? I think I got stoned a couple of times beforehand. But it was the first time I got stoned, were you, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And Because I, I had a smoke at a certain house in Mocklin a couple of times. So you did, so you did, no problem. But, uh, so when well, the first times we got stoned, we were sitting around the back, uh, the, well, around the side of the, free, the old precinct, in a smoking circle, smoking, like, I think it was like two o'clock pass. We had a bunch of, we had a bunch of like, people a couple of younger lads. Mm-hmm. And uh, then halfway through the smoking session, I got hungry, like most people do when you smoke. And I went up to the, uh, to the spa. Because he got the munchies. <laughs> At that point, it was still spa as well, actually. We went out to the spa and walked in and spa were doing like a two for two pound over at this point owing digestive biscuits. And I went, thank you. Got two packets and back into the precinct. She had maybe five or six of these baskets with the folk runners. Did they share too many? Like literally everybody got a basket each out of these two packets. And then I looked down in the pockets were empty. The way I'm fat. And then we finished the smoke, we, 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 we finished the smoke session, and I'm, I'm like, I'm hungry again. Back up the spa. There are two pockets of digestive biscuits. And again, I gave out not even half a packet. Enough for everybody, everybody had one biscuit. And again, looked down, packet of biscuits gone. Both pockets. And again, fat bass of me, eh, both of them. No, I didn't need to think anything about this. I walked him, went here, went to three. This, da- this was a daily occurrence to Dean, so he didn't think anything of it. No, no, I was just eating. It was nothing to do with the fact that we had smoked quite a bit. No, 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 it was just to do with the fact that I was, I was, I get biscuits. Go ahead, go to sleep, woke up the next morning, went to kill him, mum and dad. And I'm sitting in a pub with mum and dad, and they went out for a they went out for a smoke while we stay waiting wait in the pub lunch. And I took a, I took the first sip of my, my, my Budweiser, sat it down. At this point, I was drinking in the race in the pub. Yes, just don't tell anybody. 
took the first bite and stuff from my Budweiser. Sat it then down you and went, later, man, passed the statute of limitations. And uh, I went, oh, ah, I was done last night. And then put my phone out and text Raymond, and then telling him I was done last night. And his reply back to him was simple, and it's still that's why we laugh at the word biscuits this day. It was, yes, Dean, you ate four packets of biscuits when <laughs> you think you only stoned. Uh, oh. oh, I don't think I always not think <laughs> So now to this day, laugh about the word baskets to each other. Like whenever any one of us are or not feeling too great, we'll turn to each other and go, baskets are oaksels. See, that, that makes that makes me laugh because I, I, I had another wee tradition with the last band I was in that we had a bird boon before we went on stage. And it sounds like a pure rock star mm. thing to like think, oh, that's quite cool that that band have a bourbon before they go on stage. But then you explain to folk, no, I'm talking about a bourbon green biscuit. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's there to daft as a stupid joke because I had the munchies before going on stage. I went outside for a smoke and seen that a wee paper shop and I had a couple of quid in my pocket and thought I could buy something out of there for eating. And I went and bought a packet of biscuits, walked back in, and the singer turns and says, Why the fuck have you got a packet of biscuits? Why have you not got a packet of biscuits? I bet you want one. Because <laughs> when you're stoned, the wet is better. I bet you want one of these biscuits. I do want one. See? It's not so fucking funny now when you want one, is it? You're thinking. But- Mate, that turned into like a, a band tradition every gig we went to. It didn't matter, didn't matter if we had guitars packed. We didn't matter if we had leads packed. Who's buying the biscuits this gig? <laughs> Who fucking turn is it? And every gig we played, we had a packet of biscuits. Or two or three. It's still something I eat. I, I, I fucking... I eat like packets, I guess. Like dark chocolate biscuits, I eat them when I fucking... Like that's my, my, new, my new session now. It's dark chocolate, I guess, the biscuits. Mate, I, like, I, I'll, I'll be quite a funny story about the biscuits. And Laura will probably be sitting passion or so laughing when she hears me telling it. And it was when me and Laura just first started seeing each other, kids, she used to go shopping and she would come home with a bag of biscuits for the way, for the Wednesday. Then the exact same size bag of biscuits that was just for me. Just for you. Because... for yourself. For you. <laughs> well, mate, no, well, Laura would eat some of them too, but it would be that way where I'd, I'd come over to visit and I would end up eating the Wayne's biscuits. So to stop me from eating the Wayne's biscuits, she bought me my own biscuits. I bet, I bet now there's like a Wayne's cupboard draw, a Wayne's sweetie draw, and like a Raymond's sweetie draw. Not quite a drawer. The Wayne's have got a sweetie cupboard, and the adults have got a shelf in one of the cupboards that the Wayne's only allowed to touch. But that's yeah, for like. Certain packets, certain brands of crisps and stuff, the wings will radiate to, like Roysters. If we buy Roysters, we've got to buy a pack for the wings and a pack for our shelf. Because if no, we'll not get them. Uh, it's the same with two or three other things, man. We've, we've got boxes and a cereal in the cupboard that's got mum and dad written on them. So the wings don't touch them. Toys have been a, been been a, uh, what's the word? I was going to say single, but it's not a non-dependent uh, human being. <laughs> I don't have any other worries. I can buy sweeties. I'm not the first need to worry about eating Ralston, but nine times out of ten, it's the other way around. Ralston buys sweeties and I'm going to eat hers because again, I'm Mate, that way. <laughs> There's been two or three times that I go and buy Smash Rolls and I'll buy one for the wings and one for myself. You three, you three share that and I'll eat this one by myself. Like, <laughs> sure, like, for the first maybe year and a half, me and Laura were together, Laura's dad must have been convinced. See the middle shop at Nell Third? <laughs> Laura's dad must have been convinced that all that shop sell was Smash Rolls because yeah, he was that me out there so I could buy a Smash Roll my way here. That's wrap up. That's that. Up, Aye, that's we've, we've covered all the stories we we're planning and covering. Uh, see, I don't, I don't even have anything to plug this week, man. I'm taking a wee break now for uh, covering stuff to learn a few new ones and try and practice some new stuff for release next month. So, I just made time. I've no 
Uh, obviously, then he hasn't had time to make it much. Oh, that's why my channel has been quiet. It's better than not knowing it because I've just not had the time to say anything. Maybe why? Maybe uh, I, was, I wasn't sure just to get it started. Uh, that's like me, you know, man. With all these all these new chefs at work, um, I've not had time to sit down and do anything. I've had the last couple of days off and I intended on recording stuff, but didn't really get into it. I was catching up on sleeping stuff because it's been six o'clock rises every morning. So right. it's quite it's quite funny when you're at work and a colleague seems to think that he's higher up in the food chain than you. When you know that you're in the same same rung of the ladder, but you're the number of yours you're getting equals slightly more than the number of yours they're getting. Right. It's therefore you're you're higher up the food ladder. You're getting your own. So the only way to think on it, like. Right. So, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, new episodes, hopefully, every week. But at that rate, maybe no. We'll try our best. Get it might teams. end up being every fortnight. It might end up being every fortnight. We don't know. Assuming we get time, we might try and get something else recorded before this goes out. We don't know. So uh, just keep 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 doing keep keep the light uh, keep keep subscribe subscribing you'll see new videos when they come up. Keep 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 keep, keep 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 fucking fix the needle. He's always at Michael Smart Kid. He's always at Michael Smart Kid. I was talking about the needle on the record player. <laughs> thanks, Laura. Thanks for the back up. It's a mega smart kid. I, I was referring go. to the needle on a record player. What were you talking about? Aye. Aye, maybe this is like a smart kid. Jobby finger. Fat and hack it. Wait for myself in the deck. Mate, that doesn't get you points in the deck, what? <laughs> oh, I did too much. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm all kinds of later. Cheery bye. Bye, boys and girls. Savius, <laughs> with the these pills, you're leadless, you're leadless, you're leadless. Stand up, get up, no excuse, no excuse, no excuse. What's that coming over the hill? Is it a fat boy? Is it a fat boy?